Administration of probiotics to ICU patients may have contributed to their bloodstream infections. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the infectious probiotic edition. I'm Julie Wolf, science communication specialist here at ASM, and today we're going to be talking about a paper that was recently published in Nature Medicine that makes a genetic link between strains of lactobacillus rhamnosus used as part of a probiotic regimen and the isolates from patients who had experienced lactobacillus bacteremia. The finding comes after six patients in the intensive care unit, uh, among 522 who were receiving probiotics, developed a lactobacillus bacteremia, and this is over a five and a half year period. And that compares with only two patients out of a cohort of 21,652 who were not uh, receiving probiotics. This jump from 0.009% to 1.1% was large enough to set researchers looking for a cause of that increased incidence, and they began by looking at the probiotics themselves. To study the relatedness of different bacterial isolates, the research team took samples from the different batches of probiotics administered to these ICU patients, and they compared them to isolates from the patients receiving probiotics who experienced the L. rhamnosus bacteremia. These were compared against the lactobacillus isolates from the bacteremic patients who had not received um, probiotics, uh, which is a very important control cohort here. The isolates were all analyzed by whole genome sequencing, and we'll see the results on the next slide. The relationship between all of these bacterial genomes is illustrated here in two different figures. On the left-hand side, the isolates are represented in the horizontal rows, um, with the top three rows representing the probiotic batches, then the bacteremic patients who had received probiotics, and then finally the bacteremic patients who had not received probiotics. Um, Here the color is indicative of how similar the sequences from the, the isolates as labeled, how similar those were to the available lactobacillus rhamnosus reference sequences. Darker equals a better match here in terms of gene presence, indels, and SNPs. The pattern in the probiotic receiving patient cohort uh, more closely matches the probiotic samples than the pattern from the patients who had not received those probiotics. Now, to make a tighter relationship between these different isolates, the researchers generated the phylogenetic tree uh, on the right-hand side way over there. There are the um, multiple isolates from those probiotic Uh, batches and and multiple from each batch were found to contain various uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs that were also found in the probiotic receiving patient isolates. All of the uh, samples that came from the probiotic batches are in blue and the patient isolates are in pink over there. These were compared against the L. rhamnosus genome uh, reference genome, with FM179322, which is shown in the light blue on the bottom there. Uh, and each of the patient isolates were more related to various probiotic isolates showing similar SNP patterns than to that reference genome. Several patient isolates contained additional SNPs not seen in the probiotic strains, however, uh, and one of which, R1 at the top over there, we'll speak about on the next slide. The isolate R1 contained a SNP in its RPOS gene. The patient from which this strain was isolated had for three three months been on a a regimen that included both a rifampin derivative and antibiotic and the probiotic, which included lactobacillus rhamnosus GG, for three months prior to contracting uh, bacteremia. The mutation in this RPOS gene confers resistance to rifampin, as shown here, where that R1 isolate can grow to a higher um, level, higher concentration, than the uh, other isolates from patient samples. Though this evidence supports the probiotic supplements as the source of bacteremic infection, many questions remain, including how the bacteria uh, became bloodborne in these patients and whether concurrent antibiotic treatment led to selective resistant mutation in those probiotic um, strains. Nevertheless, this story was picked up by several news outlets, um, which highlighted the correct take-home message, in in my opinion. Uh, 
Here, as you can see, the question is whether probiotic administration should be more carefully examined in specific patient populations. Uh, particularly important to weigh carefully because probiotics do confer benefits within these patient cohorts, which is why they were being administered in the first place. Now, there's plenty of work to be done here, and we'll keep you updated on future Microbial Minutes sessions. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to enable notifications so you'll know when we post a video. Today, we've heard how probiotics may be linked to bacteremia in ICU patients. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.